with these students. That's just incredible. That must have been so exhilarating because really you're bringing this really ancient but new knowledge to the students mm-hmm. of medicine. Yes. Were they open to you? Oh, they loved it, and they send us referrals. They, they've learned to do it because we train people to do this. For, I've got a project, a pet project right now that I really want to talk about and get people involved in. We started a project on TBI, traumatic brain injuries, with the Army. They came to us, and they said, these guys get blasted with these acoustic blasts. And we really can't tell how damaged they are, and they want to go back and be with their buddies. And sometimes it's a wrong decision to let them go back because the next blast really just devastates them. They said, we need a way on the front line to be able to tell how damaged these guys are. And, Kim, we came up with it. We were able to find nine common frequencies and even look at the percentage of damage So now this can be used on the front line with our guys. When you say used on the front line, meaning that you're going to give them certain frequencies to hear to repair them, what do you mean? We could do that later on, but they're gonna we're gonna take a vocal print and see the percentage of how damaged they are, and should they go back to the front line or should they go to the hospital? I don't like the idea that we're there at all. I understand. Neither do I. But I want to help as much as I can and quit sending these guys back in because they say they're all right. Here is a way to tell to what degree they're all right. What proteins has has their body just produced to help protect their brain? And we can tell within five, ten minutes of what's going on. As part of that project, they let me add to it, let me look at post-traumatic stress disorder. Oh, that's great. That program is ready. We want to share it with the public. We want to create a network in every community that has returning soldiers. You know they're committing suicide or trying to commit suicide at the rate of one in five, the highest of any war ever. That is unacceptable. That's terrible. Uh, We just met with a congressman's office um, this week to see if we could get some funding Now, we've got the educational program ready to go. We just need the funding uh, to get it out to people, to get a team to travel, to do this, to train people in each community. And I can't think of a better thing to do for our returning soldiers than to help them integrate back into a normal life if they're ever going to be able to perceive themselves as having a normal life. I want to do this so bad. Is this something that could be integrated or brought along with the existing veterans' programs? Because a lot of times the veterans complain that their quality of care is lacking, but then some veterans say it's better than the normal health care system. But I just wondered if it would be possible, since it's very affordable, if the Veterans Administration would be open to adopting what you've created and set up and bringing it in, in cities all over the country? Well, they say they don't have the money to have people train to do it. They- Isn't it a matter of personal will just to do it? Maybe it's a matter of taking a few of the veterans and actually doing some voice healing and analysis for the people in charge at the Veterans Administration. I mean, there's no greater to me consumer than somebody who agrees with what you're doing and can see the value in it. Okay. We're also trying to get a website up with this on it. But, okay, let's say you take their voice and they need zinc and magnesium and and blah. Who's going to pay for those nutrients? Or their brain has been damaged to the point where they need sound presentation for us to help them get back their neurotransmitters for insulin or whatever's going on. Who's going to pay for the equipment, the time to have that done. That's where they're falling down. I have already trained nearly 100 people for free and given them the software for free. That's amazing. Just to try to get this started. And with some of the, we offered it to veterans for free, but that program didn't work because they were so overwhelmed with what was going on with them that they really couldn't do the process. But we have free classes, we have 
classes where they only have to buy a $25 microphone on their end. You know what? If I had the money, I'd give them the microphone. But what's happening here, we've got this one small grant from the Army that they haven't uh, paid us for, so that's a problem. Um, But this whole technique was invented, developed, pioneered without any outside funds. And I know that pioneers, and you know that I understand this, go through a lot to bring what they're doing to the world. I'm sure you've gone through trials and tribulations personally and otherwise to bring this through. Is there anything you feel comfortable to share about any trials and tribulations, or do you prefer not? Well, we have, at this point, we've sold everything we have, including our family farm. I live in one room above a garage. That's how committed we are to getting this to the public and how important it is for the future of medicine, for the future of the people. And we've had trials and tribulations um, from NIH and the FDA, but I just marched up to their door and said, hey, this is what we have. This is what we can do. And they said, don't tell anybody. Nobody will believe you, even though they wanted to keep the device we brought them, even though they wanted to... um, work on it, and they brought people in for us to work on it, and it helped. And then they asked, the NIH asked us to apply for a grant. And I thought, this is wonderful, because it looked like it was specifically written for us. New and innovative techniques of diagnostic and blah, blah, blah. So we applied for the grant, spent weeks putting it together. A few weeks later, they uh, sent us a little note that said, you didn't, you didn't even make it to the first call. Um, sounds like it has potential, but it has no foundational principles to it. A year later, a large pharmaceutical company came out with a, a paper stating that they could use vocal analysis to look at the bio, predictive biomarkers for Parkinson's. Our stuff using same machines, same technique, and that was the same year that this other guy from NIH got fined $265,000 for taking grants and grant information and proposals and selling it to pharmaceutical companies. Are you saying, without saying it, that perhaps everything you've developed has been sold? Well, I wasn't dumb enough to write everything in the grant that I knew. And so I didn't know what to do about it. How do you fight a pharmaceutical company that's worth billions? So we put out a press release and said, we're very, very happy that so-and-so pharmaceutical company is following in our footsteps. Hmm. So so that's been part of the problem. I have been audited every year since 1994 by the IRS. I have been taken to court several times for not paying taxes that we went in and proved that we paid and then petitioned to have the double payment that we made back. So so they've tried many different things on many different levels. But you know the worst one? The very, very worst one was somebody from inside coming in and embezzling and nearly killing us and involving blackmailing other employees into helping them. And there was a plan, and I'm going to give the plan on so if other people find it happening. It was a three- pronged plan. One, ruin the reputation of the leader, me. Two, ruin the reputation of the company by ruining it financially. They got 487,000, 75 percent of our income that year. And the third one was set up a competitive company that doesn't work so that when she folds, we can say, well, it didn't work anyway and we're out of here. Now, that keeps me going because that says We have something valuable that some people, and I don't know who they are, doesn't want the people to have. And this is for the people. It's for intrinsic health rights, the right of you to choose what you want for your health, to look at your health ahead of time. And this has been confirmed so many times. On December 21st last year, FDA ruling, Crestor can now be used, subscription Crestor 
can now be used for people who don't have anything.